right, here we go. Happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and excited you're joining me today for a little bit of craftiness. Yes, we're going to make a, a lovely little Hershey's Nugget treat holder. So these make great stocking stuffers or just little cute um, gifts that you can leave on your coworker's desk, drop into your uh, significant other's lunchbox maybe. So lots of fun things you can do with them. So I am going to uh, go ahead and switch the camera over. I'm a few minutes late today, so sorry about that. You got a lot of technical issues. Yes? Always fun, right? All right. So the cards behind me that you're seeing are a sneak peek of my upcoming bingo event. We're going to play bingo on December 10th. It's a card class, really, is what it is. And we play bingo as well for fun. So um it's a good time. So I hope that you'll join us if you've not joined us before, or if you have joined us before and you have not registered, get your registration in. It closes on November 26th. So it'll be here before we know it. Cannot believe Thanksgiving is next week. Um, I've also got a few other class registrations open now. I, um, I released my fitting florets class early because I'm a little bit worried that the, um, it, the limited release products um, are going to sell out before my registration date. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to register for that right away. And then um, I also have a Lights of Glow class out. However, I found out today the paper is no longer available. So um, I found paper to um, cover those that have already paid for class, but um, I'm seeing what else is gonna happen today or I'm gonna have to close that registration. So gosh, I hate it when that happens. The other big thing you need to know is today is our seasonal sale. Oh my gosh, we have four fabulous days of sales going on. And um, it's multiple items out of the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. And so our annual catalog, let me make sure you know which one is. The annual annual catalog looks like this. Jam-packed full of all kinds of fabulous things. So you've got stamps and dies and embossing folders, papers that are all on sale right now. Um, I will tell you, if there is a stamp and die bundle that you're interested in and it's in the sale, which most of them are, um, look at the prices because it's actually less expensive to purchase those individually, which we'll talk about in a minute um, as we work on today's project. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over. Let's get started with our crafty fun. Yay. All right. So today, let me see if I can fix that lighting just a bit. Maybe. I don't know if that will help or not. We'll see. It looks a little um, bright, but we'll see what we got. Oh, good. Yay, hey, Connie, Susan, Jean. So glad you guys are all here. Perfect. All right, so we're going to get started. So I've got the Season of Chic Down Set and Die Bundle. Um, so again, these are on the seasonal sale. So if you don't have these yet, first of all, they're fantastic and you want to have them. Um, but they're less expensive if you buy them individually. For example, the stamp set is typically $27 and is on sale for $22.95. Now, I'm talking U.S. prices because that's where I'm located. So, sadly, if you do not live in the U.S., you cannot buy purchase. You cannot purchase Stampin' Up! products from me. Um, you can purchase class tutorials, but not products. And then the chic dies are normally $37, and they're on sale for $29.60. What a bargain. I'm also going to pull in the Butterfly Kisses Designer Series paper. This is one of my favorite ones from the annual catalog. It's bright. It's cheerful. And um, you guys may or may not know this about me, but I'm not a winter kind of gal. It, I like the summer weather, and this makes me feel like summer, spring. And that's what I want my mood to be. <laughs> that's where I want my head to be. But we're going to change it, and we're going to make a winter uh, gifty project. So this paper is also on sale, normally $12. It is on sale for $9.60. So you can pick up a pack of that as well. So after the video, I will update the description so that you can see the complete supply list. You just click on those links. It'll take you right to the online store. You can purchase the items you want. And then I'll also have the cut dimensions so that you can recreate this on your own. So this is a little cute Hershey Nugget treat box we're doing. And so you can't even tell this is the butterfly kisses. So I tried to make it a little wintry. Um, and there's a little bit of uh, surprise in the bottom of the box as well. I'm not going to open this one. I'm going to show you as we go. So we're just going to make this fun little um, nugget treat box. We got our little snowflake. So it's a nice wintry uh, project. This would be great. Like I said, stocking stuffers. Oh, my gosh. 
How fun would it be if your stocking stuffers were all little gifty packages like this? How fun. Yay. Or if a coworker, if you just sat back down at your desk and this was at your desk, oh, I would love it. You'd be the best coworker ever, right? Ah, oh, yes. Yes, I know, Jean, the lights of glow paper. I was floored when it when I realized it was sold out. Yesterday it said TBD, and then this morning I uh, didn't see it in the not orderable. So I thought, oh, good, I'll 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 go ahead and order for those that are paid for class. And then I realized they discontinued it. It's no longer available. So I'm getting my hands on some for those that have already paid for class. So all right, we're going to start with our designer paper and. Um, this is five and a half by three and seven eighths. And I'm going to score it on all four sides at five eighths and one and a quarter. So I'm going to use the ball tip end of my, my scoring tool because I'm on designer paper and I feel like I do better with that. Um, you don't want to put too much pressure when you're scoring designer series paper because you can tear the paper pretty easily. But I do want a nice score line. Now, I will sometimes use the wide ball on regular cardstock as well. It just depends on if I'm having trouble staying in the groove. And sometimes the wider ball helps me with that. All right, so I've got my score lines on all four sides. I'm going to go ahead and do my next scoring piece just so that I don't have to pull the tool back out. So we're going to pull in a window sheet. This is four inches. Whoops, got a little die cut there. Four inches by two and three eighths. Okay. And we're going to score this at a half inch on all four sides. So let me move my marker to make sure I score in the right place. Now on this one, I'm going to switch to the tiny ball and I'm going to give it some really hard pressure because the window sheet is kind of thick and a little harder to score. Now, if you don't have window sheets, which I personally like to keep on hand for shaker cards and, and whatnot, and they work really well for pop-up cards. You could use the packaging from the stamp set. So like, I don't know if you do what I do and I'll show you in a moment. I remove my stamps from the plastic when they come and I stick them to my case and then discard the plastic. So that plastic that comes in it, you could use for things like this if you wanted to. All right, so all four sides, I'm giving that a really hard push. Um, and so you can see those score lines, all four. All right, let's move our Simply Scored out of the way. Now, if you don't have a scoring tool to use, you can use your paper trimmer. I just find when I'm doing multiple score lines, I prefer to do it this way. So, all right, let's go ahead and fold on our score lines first. Look at those fun butterflies. It's so cheerful on the other side, too. But I love this Fresh Freesia. Fresh Freesia and Pool Party, to me, is a great um, wintertime color combination. It's very... Um, cool right in the colors and so it makes me think of snowy days got it you could twist that and put a different element with it and it would make you think of spring days as well but in this instance it's making me think of snowy days all right so i've got my designer paper folded i'm going to do my window sheet now on this when i fold these i'm going to give it a hard fold with my fingers first and then i do want to go back and crease this but i'm going to put a scrap paper over the top I found that I will um, scratch the surface of the acetate if I run my bone folder over it without a scrap piece of paper. So let's grab a scrap piece of paper. Jean, you want to know if you can sign up for the class if you have your own lights to grow plate paper. Um, you could do the tutorial option. I am going to pull the class registration down if I cannot locate the paper uh, today. So right now it's open, but know that I would have to, if you paid for it, I would end up refunding you if I can't get my hands on the paper. So I'm waiting on a response back from a friend that I've asked to see if they can help me. So, um, but those that have already paid assured are assured that they will get their kit. All right, so I'm giving that a crease again. I'm just covering it with that scrap paper so that I'm not scratching the surface of this acetate here with my bone folder. So yeah, it makes me sad because I've been, um, you know, I had my sixth grandchild last week. So my class had been designed and I'd been meeting to get it up the registration for a few weeks, but with having her here, I couldn't get it done. So I was a little late and you know, you snooze your loaf, it happens. 
So this is why when you see something that you really want from Stampin' Up, you should buy it right away because you just never know. All right, we're going to go ahead and clip this. And I'm going to clip these four corners away. I'm just clipping them out. And I am slightly, ever so slightly, angling out from this score line. So I don't know if you can see that. So my score line's there. I'm just going to come just slightly out on that bottom. I don't really want it angled, but I, um, I do want to get away a little bit of it because it'll fit down into the box a little bit better. Okay, so our four corners are, well, I got one more. We're just clipping these away with our snap. This is gonna make our lid. All right, so got those clipped away. So that's gonna be my lid. So I'm gonna set that aside for now and we'll work on the box base. All right, so I'm gonna start by clipping. And I'm gonna go straight in. So I've got my two center score lines. I'm gonna go straight in and I'm gonna to cut to the second score line, okay? So I'm gonna repeat that on both sides. And then we'll do that at the opposite end as well. I'm gonna take this in steps so that I hopefully can make it easy for you to recreate. Because like I said, you can do these in so many colors and so many prints and patterns and do them for any, any season and holiday you want to. All right, so now I'm going to rotate it the other direction, and I'm going to cut away these outer two. Okay, so just these outer two. I'll do that on all four sides. Okay. All right, now. I want this to be a little tab. So I'm going to cut away this little box right there. I'm going to do that in all four corners. I'm going to just clip away that little box. Okay. And one more. All right. So this is clipped the way I want it as far as the shape. Now I want to miter some of my corners. When I say that, I'm just going to angle cut them so that I um, um, think, Wendy, so that I have a good um, folding going on. I feel like my light is really weird today. Do you guys feel like that? Nope, I don't want it to be black and white. I'm playing with a couple settings. Maybe it's that my, my light's not bright enough. Let's see if I turn it up a little bit. No, I don't see it going up either. Hmm, it just seems really dark. All right, well, hopefully you guys can see all right. It just seems dark to me. It could be the angle I'm at. All right, so let's go ahead and miter these edges. Yeah, it looks really dark on screen. Hmm. All right, well, hopefully you guys can see all right. So let's angle cut these. So the outer tabs on all the sides, I'm gonna go ahead and angle cut. So let's do these on the long side. I'm just gonna angle this outer one. And let's do that on the opposite side there. And again, this is just gonna make it so it folds up and that those little points don't fight each other, just in case I'm off a little bit in my cutting. All right, then let's do these two outer ends. And do the opposite side as well. You know, sometimes it's hard to see those score lines and we, we don't get it cut exactly. So this helps. All right, so then I'm gonna pull that in and these little tabs, I'm gonna do a little angle cut on these as well. And opposite side, same thing. All right, now we're ready to assemble this bad boy. Okay, so all my little mitered corners, we'll just throw that to the side. So I've got all that good, ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to slide this upside down, and I'm going to use my stamp and seal, which it looks like I've stolen from my cart. No! And, of course, the one I can see close to me is almost empty. So we'll see if we make it through the project. All right, so I'm going to put adhesive on all four tabs of my long tabs, right? Now, you could use stronger adhesive if you want. I actually didn't feel that I needed to with this. You know, this is pretty sticky tape, and I'm working with designer paper. So I'm going to fold down my tabs, and I want to put adhesive on the tabs as well. Now, if you prefer liquid glue, you go right ahead and use liquid glue or tear and tape if that makes you happy. 
It's whatever makes you happy. But again, I didn't find any issues with using stamp and seal on this. It was nice and sturdy. All right. So my tabs have adhesive. So I'm going to fold the tabs in on the short side. And I'm adhering them, make the box side. All right. Makes sense. I got one end. I'm going to fold these out just so maybe you can see a little bit better. Okay. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm just going to fold that in, matching those corners. Okay, so that's my box base on the sides. And now I can just fold in each of these tabs. That's going to hide those little end tabs, this little side. And having these um, extra panels on the sides is going to make this nice and sturdy. Since we're using designer paper, having that double box side is nice. Okay, let's go ahead and use our bone folder. I'm going to give that a good crease on each each of my corners, good press. And now I have a nice, um, sturdy, pretty sturdy box, right? Now this is going to measure, I'm gonna say this, it's three inches, five eighths tall, and um, one and three eighths wide. So I wanna put a piece of cardstock in here because I really don't wanna see butterflies for the project I'm making today. Now, other times, I might love to have that other side of that designer paper, but I want to pull in that pool party. So I'm bringing my scrap paper back in, and I've got a piece of pool party that I cut. It's technically 2 and 15 16 by 1 and 5 16. But I will tell you, the 16 is just a smidge narrow or a smidge wide, depending on which way you want to look at it. So if you know that this finishes three, the box finishes three inches by one and a one and three eighths, you would want to take, you could cut it three by one and three eighths and then come back and just shave off a skinny off both sides. Or you could cut it two and seven eighths by one and a quarter, but go fat. So it's a little bit wider. I found that if I cut it to the eighth inch smaller than the box finishes, that it was a little too small, or at least smaller than I wanted it to be. Now you can make it anything you want it to be, but that that was what my preference was um, for today's project. So again, you do what makes you happy, but that's what I did. All right, let's do some stamping on this layer here. So I've brought in, I'm gonna bring in my little snowflake image, and then I'm gonna add a sentiment as well. So let's do pool party on pool party. Now, if you don't have the ink color that matches your cardstock, did you guys know that you can always use a Versamark ink? So Versamark ink will leave a watermark. It won't be quite as dark as what you would see with the tone on tone of the same color ink, but it will leave a nice watermark subtle appearance that you can uh, do there. So that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna move to Gorgeous Grape ink pad. I'm gonna add my sentiment. You are amazing beyond measure. You can send that any time of year, right? Let them know. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now, if that pool party were a little too dark for you, you could stamp off and make that lighter. Should we try that on the other side just to see which side we'd like better? Let's do that. I'm going to put my sentiment back on again just because it's already open and out. And then we'll stamp off and see which side we'd like better. You guys can vote and tell me which one. Kind of fun, right? All right. The stamping off is going to give you a lighter shade. Since I was talking about that uh, Versamark pad and it being lighter, I thought, ooh, this might be nice lighter. So stamp off. I'm going to stamp it on my scrap and then stamp it. Oh, it stamped off almost all the ink. I'm not going to like this. I can already tell you. Yeah, not good. It stamped off almost all the ink. I think I needed a foam pad on this one. Definitely need uh, need to stay on the other side, I think. Yeah, maybe my own screen does have some issues, Jean. I'll have to look at it. I had some weird stuff yesterday, so I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Technology is always a challenge. All right. So I want you to go ahead and adhere that inside there. Kind of fun, right? So when you remove the candy, you've got a little um, sentiment. Now, you can put this down with stamp and seal. I'm going to actually use liquid glue because that'll give me a little bit of play in case it's narrower than the opening. And it's going to be slightly narrower. I just found that if I cut it that full width, that full three inches by one and three eighths, that it was a little too wide because that's the outside finished edge dimension. 
All right, so I'm going to lay this in here. And then because I use liquid glue, I can use my fingers and slide that around a little bit and get it exactly where I want it. So you can see I've got a small sliver of designer paper showing around the edges, but I'm okay with that. All right, I'm going to give that a good push in my corners. Make sure that's adhered down really well. So fun, right? Okay, let's do our candies. So I've got the traditional Hershey Nuggets. I can't even imagine how many years it's been that we've been crafting with Hershey Nuggets. So I've got one inch by three inch strips of designer paper and I chose another one that was kind of a dot um, print because I thought it looked kind of like snow, right? So I'm just going to actually, I want adhesive on both ends. So I'm going to put this on the back centered and I'm going to wrap this around my candy. You could stamp and do your own thing if you'd rather. Um, we used to do these with Avery labels as well. All right. And then you don't have to put any adhesive on them. Cute, right? And so we're just going to do three of these. A little adhesive. I'll just wrap that. Okay, there's two and do one more, at least for this size box. You could adjust the box size if you wanted to do more, but you'd need, you couldn't use the six by six designer paper if you do that. You'd need the 12 by 12 paper if you wanted a longer box that fit more candies. And of course you could go shorter and do it for two. Cute, love it, love it, love it. Love it. So now I'm just gonna push the side of this acetate down inside the box for my lid. And because I cut away those corners, well, it worked fine the first time. What did I do? Oh, I totally torn my box. I don't know what I did. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what I did. Okay, cute, 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 cute. Yeah, I totally torn this edge of this box. So. I wonder if I scored that crooked and I have it a little too long in that corner. It seems like I might have. Because it did not do that on my first one. It's a nice fit. And I have a nice fit up top, but for whatever reason on this bottom edge, I my guess is, is I had it cut a little too wide. Because it is fighting me. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim away a little bit in that corner and see if that helps. And I've got it flipped upside down. Yeah, I'll have to see what I can do to fix that. All right, a little tape is going to have to happen on that one or a new box. All right, next we are going to pull in some ribbon. So I've got about 18 inches of this beautiful pool party ribbon. Now, um, know that when when i was pushing this down this was fighting it and i ended up slicing that designer paper if you don't want that to happen if you're trying to put it in and it feels like you're forcing it then stop and you won't have the torn edge that i have looking to see if i've got any scotch tape maybe i can uh grab in there's a little piece just to get through the box and then i can recreate later as need be i'm going to put it on the inside if I can salvage that. Now, I probably could do a um, piece of paper around it, around the outside, and fix that as well. But we're going to try this for now. See if we can salvage our little edge here. Yeah, no, that's going to be ugly. We'll just make a new one later. All right, so we're going to work with this as is. You guys will know. Just be careful when you put that in. If it's too big, to slice that corner out a little bit more. All right. We're going to pretend that that didn't happen, <laughs> right? You guys have this happen when you craft too, right? All right, so 18 inches, I'm going to find the center-ish. And what I want to do is I want to wrap the ribbon around this corner here. So I want this angled corner. So what I found is if I hold this and bring this down and pull this back around, it's gonna hold up really well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So it might be more angled than you might expect it to be, but it actually works really well to do it this way. 
let me get this kind of tightened down a little bit here. And I'm going to hold this so you can see the back. So it's wrapped on both corners and you can see it just comes around and wraps there. And then you're just going to tie this in a bow. Now, sometimes this is hard to tie in a bow. You almost need a third finger. So you could put a glue dot on that to try to hold that for you. Let's see if that'll work for us today. Things are not going in my favor. So who knows? It, this might work out great and it might not. We'll see what happens. Earlier today, it was fine. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna grab a little glue dot. I'm gonna pull that tight and I'm gonna lay this glue dot on that ribbon where that ribbon is intersecting there. And I'm gonna just kind of smush it down. I just need it to hold it for a moment while I tie this bow. Okay, so that's kind of holding that for me. Nice, right? And then now I can make my loops and I'm not anywhere centered like I was supposed to be, but that's okay. It still should work out fine. We will tie our little bow here. Maybe. Try again. Like I said, it's one of those days for sure. All right. I'm going to slide that back out. Pull my bow nice and tight. Oh yeah, it's so pretty. This ribbon ties wonderfully, just wonderfully. And then I can clip off any excess that I don't need. So it actually turned out just fine that I had that one side a little bit longer. So cute, so cute. So you could leave it just like this and you can't even tell I've got my, well, you can tell. So my rip corner kind of gets hidden a little bit there. Cute, I love it how it is. But let's add a little bit of decoration to it, right? So I have, if I can find them, I've already die cut two pieces. I die cut this snowflake using the chic die. So I pull those in. So I use this snowflake right here. And when I cut, I was like, oh, that looks like a cute little heart sort of in the middle. So then I use the celebration tag dies, which I forgot to grab from the mini catalog. And that tag set has all kinds of little elements. And one of them is this adorable little heart. So I decided to use that heart. And let's see, do I have my foam pad? I am gonna grab my foam pad for my stamping. And I'm gonna stamp my little sentiment on there. The stamp set is from the Season of Chic. So I'm using all the same stamp set. And we're bringing back in our gorgeous grape ink pad. And we've got this little love you sentiment, which I think you can use any time of year. Now let's see if I can get this on here. This is a tight fit, but it will fit. It might cut off the U part a little bit, but how fun is that? So it falls just right in the edge of that little heart there. I made a bit of a mess. Perfect. And then we're gonna grab some mini dimensionals if I've got them. Doesn't look like I've got them. So we'll grab some full size dimensionals and we're just gonna clip some pieces off. I'm just gonna clip an edge. So it doesn't matter what you've got, you use what you have. And then let me clip an edge from this side too. You could cut one in half if you prefer. I like to use the edges this way. All right, so that's on. And just pull off that backing paper. I'm going to place this right in the middle of that snowflake. So cute. And then I'm going to put a couple of glue dots on the back. And it's just going to secure it in place. Now you could tie, you could use some linen thread or something and tie it on. But I felt like the snowflake was a little bit delicate. And so I'm just going to slide that right under the edge so it looks like it's tied on, but it's not really. Cute, so sweet, I love it. So it's a nice little wintry treat box, or you could use it any time of the year, right? Fun, doesn't that just make it a little more special when it's in a pretty package? You know, if you left somebody some candies on their desk, they'd probably really like that, but boy, wouldn't they love it if it was in something like this. Yeah, just takes you a few extra moments. You guys like it? 
I hope so. Yes. All right. Good. Thank you guys for joining me today for our crafty fun. If you um, love, would love taking some classes, I do offer quite a few classes. Every month I have new ones. I have a card club um, and I've got something new that I will be launching here in a few weeks. I'll tell you about that maybe more next week. But if you want to know what I've got going on, definitely uh, sign up for my email list. So there will be a link in the video uh, description. you got to show more and expand it to be able to get to it and uh, join my email list. I do send a gift of a tutorial bundle, an exclusive tutorial bundle every month to my subscribers. So you get a minimum of 12 for free. Um, and then you'll be up to date on all my happenings and events so you don't miss anything. So we have a lot of fun crafting together. Uh, and I hope that you will decide to join me for an upcoming event. All right. Thank you, guys. If you're not yet a subscriber to my YouTube channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, and don't forget to share this with your crafty friends if you think they'd enjoy it. All right. Have a great week. And I hope to see you guys again next.